Motorspeedway.com. Texas Motor Speedway, dreamed up and designed by famed track owner Bruton Smith to be fast, flashy, and fun for fans. Certainly that vision's become reality. And today, the fans coming out again to see the NASCAR Nationwide Series race in Fort Worth for the 20th time. Get ready for the opening ceremony down trackside. Then they're going to clear the grid. The drivers will buckle in and they'll turn them loose on a day when Brad Keselowski can clinch the championship. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise and remove your hats as the Grapevine Fire Department Honor Guard presents our nation's colors. Please remain standing as Texas Motor Speedway track chaplain, Father Jay Atwood, offers today's invocation. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for an absolutely gorgeous day. We give you thanks for this country and for the men and women who defend it and the freedoms we celebrate every day. We give you thanks for motorsport racing and for all who make it possible, the promoters, the officials, the sponsors. But on this day, we give thanks for the drivers, the crews, and their teams, and ask for your safety and protection among each of them. Remind each of us that what we do, we do to your honor and glory. And this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. To honor our troops, please place your right hand over your heart as former American Idol and Nashville Star finalist and host of Texas Music Interactive on 95.9 The Ranch Radio, Charla Korn performs our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early lights one so bright Gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets regular the at least for us time to see who's going to be the bravest and best on one of the baddest tracks in nascar mm. the engines fire we go racing in texas next nascar nationwide series at texas is brought to you by verizon the signal is yours wield it to transmit anything you want verizon the choice of tailgaters bush's big beans and Nationwide Insurance. Enter this code at CodeSpotter.com for a chance to win a Roush Ford Mustang. Time Warner Cable, Verizon Bios, and Bright House Networks. A beautiful afternoon in Fort Worth, Texas for the NASCAR Nationwide Series to go racing at the super fast Texas Motor Speedway. The command to start engines is just a moment away. Before the start, we recap a couple of the top stories entering the day. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Thank you, Alan. You know, Brad Keselowski grew up in the Midwest watching his dad, uncle, and grandfather chase short track and regional racing titles. But Brad had a dream. His dream was to appear on a bigger stage. He wanted to come to NASCAR. Four years ago, he came here driving for an underfunded team owner named Keith Coleman. Now, he impressed a lot of people, including Dale Earnhardt Jr., who said, I know what it feels like to be a third-generation driver. He drove for Dale Jr. two years, winning six races, and then moved on to Roger Penske this year in a Dodge. Today, Brad Keselowski can realize that dream by finishing 21st or better. This is what NASCAR is all about, folks. Chasing dreams, the rags to reach the story of Brad Keselowski in just four short years. Dave. 
And Doc, Kyle Busch loves to do things in NASCAR that have never been accomplished before. And this weekend at Texas Motor Speedway, he can win at this track for the sixth time in a row in the Nationwide Series. That has never been done. Crew Chief Jason Ratcliffe told me that three, three wins was amazing. Four was unbelievable. And five, well, that was just stupid. How do you get greater than great? Well, they hope to today and put another record in the record book. Alan? <laughs> That's fun. Greater than great. David, thank you. And uh, there's Danica Patrick in the field as well. That is second in an IndyCar race here in June. And uh, still looking for a top 15 finish in her stock car debut at this track today. Yeah, I think she'll do a very good job. She did very well at Charlotte. Qualified the car well, ran some very, very good lap times, was keeping up with the leaders on pace. She has a lot of experience in this race, at this racetrack in an Indy car. I think we see Danica Patrick's best finish today at Texas. And uh, Rusty, when the drivers are sitting there getting buckled in like that at this particular track, you were telling me just a second ago, some things go through your mind. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I'm thinking about the pitfalls in this racetrack. Some of the problem areas that i got to be aware of, uh, restarts at the start-finish line. We talked in the countdown, how you can spin the tires and pile up. I'm also thinking thinking about when I get in traffic. Will I lose that nose, not have enough downforce, and maybe lose the car off of turn two? I'll be watching for that, the exit of turn two. Also, don't get too high off of turn four and tear this car. Those are the three things at this track that's going through my mind. And you see these drivers uh, fastening up the safety gear and uh, getting ready to go. Again, the fastest track in NASCAR this year in the Nationwide Series, the 189-plus mile-an-hour qualifying lap that won the pole for James Busher, the fastest we've seen all season. In fact, the fastest we've seen in some time in this series. It is a lightning-quick racetrack these drivers will ride today, especially with the cooler weather helping these engines make a little more horsepower. Speaking of engines, time to let them roar. Let's go trackside. And now, race fans, it's time for those most famous words in motorsports. Here to give the command, please welcome your Grand Marshal, manager of Texas Oil Exchange in Duncanville, Texas, Eric Ellison. Drivers, start your engine! <laughs> style. And so we're ready to go here in Texas. There's a champion to be crowned, a series record held with Dale Earnhardt and Jack Ingram waiting to be broken and possibly an upset about to happen. We'll see how it plays out. To take us through it, our three men in the booth, none of whom would wear a cowboy hat for this on-camera appearance. Marty Reed, Dale Jarrett, and Andy Petrie, gentlemen. <laughs> it's because Brad's got the market all cornered. Thanks, yeah. Alan. <laughs> Hello again, everybody. Uh, you've heard everything about Kyle Busch. There's 42 other guys in this field. He's going for six in a row on this track. Is there anybody really out there that can stop him? I think so, Marty. I think uh, if you look at that 33 car starting on the front row, Kevin Harvick and his team have really closed the gap on Joe Gibbs' dominance in this series. I really think that this is one of his best tracks. This could be a really good opportunity for Kevin to kind of break that dominance up a little bit with, with Kyle. Uh, Kyle's going to be good, but I think Kevin can, can beat him. Well, there are a number of drivers and teams that think they have kind of closed the gap there. Probably his most serious challenger may be his own teammate, Joey Logano, but at the end of the day, no, it's just not going to happen. This guy has this racetrack figured out to a T. He's going to go out there, and the only people and that can really beat them are the team themselves and Kyle Busch making a mistake. Well, and if you were with us throughout Countdown, you know that several drivers have jobs secure for next season, but there's still a lot out there that do not know what they're going to be doing. Three weeks left. Are we going to get more aggressive here? Well, time's running out, Marty, so there are drivers out there with a lot to prove, and they want to get it done now. This is a great racetrack to do that. It's a big, fast track. If you can be successful here, you can really open some eyes of some people that might be able to put you in a car. Yeah, guys, I can remember back in the 80s. I know that's a long time ago and have a hard time. I remember, but I was fighting, trying to get a job, uh, making one of these owners notice uh, my talents as a race car driver. So, yeah, I was a little more aggressive. I think we're going to see that today. These guys are going to put it out there on the line and, and just see what they can do to get someone to notice their talent. So that may mean pushing and shoving here. Well, we saw one of those drivers get noticed a few years back. He's on the verge of being a champion. He's going to be our in-race reporter. We're talking about none other than our points leader in the 22 car, Brad Keselowski. Let's talk to him, DJ. Hey, Brad, Dale Jarrett, ESPN. You have a copy? Yes, sir. Hey, Brad, our first question comes from our ESPN mailbag, and Larry in Lawrenceville, Georgia, asked, would winning today's race be a perfect way for you to clinch the championship this year? And I'm going to add, was your car good enough yesterday in practice to make that happen? 
Yes, it would be the perfect way. Uh, you know, that's what we're all going to try to do here. Uh, but it's not going to be easy. You know, I've still got uh, Kyle up there who runs really good here. And, uh, you know, nobody gives us anything. We saw how hard it was for us to practice alone. So, uh, you know, I think our car is pretty good. We just got to be smart and work our way up to the front at a steady pace. We can do that. Absolutely. We'll be there at the end and win. Hey, Brad, I've talked to a lot of drivers and heard a lot on TV this weekend talking about how rough this racetrack is. First, Dick, have you had to change your line any in entering these corners where those uh, rough spots are? And how difficult is that going to make side-by-side -side racing into these corners? Yeah, 10-4, that's a uh, great point, Dale. It's a very rough racetrack, but uh, that gives it character, and it's kind of unique here in Texas. Uh, if it wasn't so rough, the high line would be way faster. So, you know, if you have your car set up to where it can get to the bumps real well, you can run the top and make passes. And it's hard to tell. I think we've got our discount tire dodged where we could do that. But, uh, you know, you don't know until you get in the race and how the grip level develops and how it falls off on the bottom lane. That's where we're going to determine whether or not you can run the top. All right, Brad, have a great day in uh, trying to clinch that championship. Now Andy's going to talk to your crew chief, Paul Wolf. Thank you very much, guys. Hey, Paul Wolf, Andy Petrie in the booth, you got us? Loud and clear, Andy. Hey, Paul, uh, what do you need that car to do today uh, on this racetrack to make it where Brad can drive it in Victor Lane when it's over? Uh, touching on what Brad mentioned there with uh, how rough this track's kind of gotten. Uh, really need to work through uh, making that car work through the bumps. We worked on that in practice. Um, just seems like you can get your car uh, one end or the other um, as far as you're blowing through the grip there as you go through the bumps. So we worked through our shock stuff a little bit. Um, didn't quite get as much practice as we wanted. It was uh, definitely a challenge uh, with short uh, practice time yesterday, but um, all the guys worked really hard to repair the car and um, just proud of the effort they put in and uh, feel like we'll have to work hard today, but um, we'll put ourselves in position at the end and uh, the fastest car doesn't always win these things and um, as long as we're there at the end, I uh, feel like we'll have a shot at it. Okay, Paul, I hope you got that shot combination right and good luck today. Thanks for talking to us. Andy, thanks. Cars out on track. When we come back, what it means is we'll be going green here at Texas Motor Speedway. Will you design? TotaRacing.com. Beautiful view of the Great American Speedway as we're getting ready to go green. Don't forget about the Nationwide Dash for Cash program. It's uh, four races. This is the final stop. You must compete in every nationwide race to qualify. There are two cup crossover drivers that have qualified for that $75,000 $75, if they win. Of course, that's Brad Keselowski and Carl Edwards. But Justin Allgaier and uh, Trevor Bain could have the year-end bonus on their minds, 75,000 big ones for the exclusive nationwide driver with the most points in those four races. All right, starting grid's going to be coming across the top of your screen. Eight drivers did not make the field. Chase Miller, Carl Long, Brian Keselowski, Danny O'Quinn, Jeff Green, Morgan Shepard, Mark Green, and Mike Harmon. No cars to the rear. And a 20-year-old James Busher from nearby Plano, Texas, brings the field around. Five of the drivers starting in the top six are past Nationwide Series champions. Not just winners, but champions. So busher has got a lot of company right behind him. Pace car has pulled off. Coming down on the front straightaway. The O'Reilly Auto Parts Challenge at Texas Motor Speedway is green. made it through turn two. You heard the guys talking in countdown how treacherous that corner can be. Can we make it through lap number one? And right now, coming up to the stripe, James Busher is going to lead by several car lengths. Yeah, so watch these guys up on the high side. You know, we had practice earlier today. The racetrack hasn't really widened out that much, so they're having to be a little bit careful up on the top right now. But well, one reason is so fast. This track has so much grip right now. These cars are visibly fast. I mean, just standing here watching them, it's just unreal how fast they're going through the corner. Not hardly lifting at all. Clint Boyer on the low side. Carl Edwards right above him. Clint clears. And we're about to complete lap number two. And Busher is opening up the lead even a little bit more. It's almost a full half second over Kevin Harvick. Then Kyle Busch, Boyer, Carl Edwards. That's your top five. There goes Kyle Busch for that second spot already. Now he's a man on the gas. So Kyle does clear. Take over the second position. And he'll set his sights now on James Busher. 
checking when Busher got the pole at age 20, and we were thinking about who was the youngest. The guy right behind him in second place. He did it when he was 18. Yeah, we just talked about it in the uh, countdown show just how good he is here. You see, just barely getting out of that throttle and back on it wide open. It just shows you, you know, how much grip this has and just how much Kyle Busch is able to carry that momentum through the middle of the corner. That's the way you do it. I mean, you see right here, just getting down in the corner, not not even all the way out of the throttle. Yeah, and the other thing is you see no brakes on this. Kyle's just, he's really good at, at keeping this momentum going. A lot of that is not slowing the race car down with any brake at all. And unlike last week at Talladega, everything is sort of, well, sort of sorted itself out pretty quickly here and through the first 10 positions. As you can see, pretty much single file for right now. Well, at Talladega, you can hold that throttle down wide open, but no problem. I mean, by yourself, it's no problem to hold it down. But here, you're right up against the grip level, and it's hard to do that. I mean, they are really turning, bending these cars. It's a mile-and-a-half track. Here so, comes. Yeah, there goes Kyle for the lead. Kyle is going to take the lead now, so he'll lead on this lap. Busher led the first four. See all the way back. It's about the 12th spot before we find a little side-by-side -side action. Whoa, little nudge back there. Here comes Joey Logano. Logano with Martin Truex Jr. Logano going underneath. Got a little wiggle there. That is a battle for sixth. Got a very wide right here on fourth. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremy Clements right oh, there in the middle. Contact. Justin Allgaier also in that mix. Stan Barrett in the 31. Sorts out a little bit, although Barrett's about to get run over by the 10 car. And Jeremy Clements in that 04, he's got that car rolling. Stan Barrett qualified well, but he hasn't raced much this year in these cars. Let's go back and show you just how close this was. That was one of these guys come out of turn four. Oh, was, didn't see it quite get quite that close, but nice save by Jeremy. Yeah, excellent. Let's go back to the battle for third. Kevin Harvick's got a mirror full of Carl Edwards. Edwards going down low, and it looks like he's going to get under him here. Momentum for Harvick keeps yeah. him up there. Yeah, but he's going to give up that spot. His car doesn't look like it's exactly to his liking right now. Everyone was pretty happy with his car in practice. Well, and remember, uh, Vince, uh, in the pre-race, he was concerned about tires. What's the word you're hearing? Well, and also in that pre-race interview, you heard Kevin say that they didn't run much in practice, so he wasn't quite sure what he had. And then right away, he identified that, that uh, Kyle Busch was getting off the corner a lot better than he is. And he says right now it's just a little bit too loose. That's why you saw Edwards able to get underneath him. Harvick not pushing it now. He knows he's got a good car, comparatively speaking, to the field not quite good enough to challenge these guys up ahead of him. And that uh, top three, opening up a little bit of ground. Battle further back. Danica Patrick's got an eye full of this. That's uh, Eric Darnell in the 16 right in front of her seven car. Michael Annette in the 15. The 05 of David Starr. Whoa, oh, into the wall. Yeah, Here we go. You. Contact. All right, go low, go low, go lower, go lower. Danica got some damage right, right there, too, on her right side. Go up slow down to stand the line, stand the line. She goes underneath David Starr. Starr's got the most damage. Yeah, still no caution. That's why they're racing around here fast. You see a lot of damage on that car of uh, David Starr. So. Starr, a native of Texas, has run here multiple times in the truck series. Be lucky if that right front oh, doesn't it just blow did. out. It just did. You can see the sparks. He's down. And really slowing down now. Up, David, going through three. Guys, go by. Stay up. Stay and we up. are still green. All right, come on down. We're going to have to pit, guys. Right side tires. Let's go back and show you exactly what happened. Yeah, we heard things got charged. Rusty and Brad talked about early in the countdown show just how this track flattens out and your car just pushes, pushes, and you get so much wheel in the back end breaks loose. You see that right there where Danica got the damage on the right front. Just typical racing here at Texas. From on board with Danica. She did everything right right here. You see her check up, get down out of the way. Go, go low, go low, go lower, go lower. That was Darnell with the contact. She pitted. What's the latest you hear, Dave? 
they replaced two right side tires on that seven car. Danica complaining that she could not turn the car when she got back down into turns one and two. Fixed a little bit of right side damage as well, but just the two right sides replaced. And you can see at top of the screen, that's David Starr. He has pulled down onto pit road as well. Battle for second place right now. The 30 of James Bush and Carl Edwards, they're duking it out. Harvick is now fourth. Martin Truex is fifth. Joey Logano and Clint Boyer round out your top seven. Bush is already trying to work the middle of the racetrack here early in the race. He was quickest in the final practice, of course, took the pole, his second career pole in the series. And right now, he's door to door with the 60 of Carl Edwards. Now, that middle groove right there that he's running is something that you can make work here. You keep a lot of momentum going. You can see just the momentum that carries off of the corner makes it difficult for someone like Carl Edwards to get the run that he needs. He'll try to out drive him down into turn three and get enough room. As you can see Carl did that now. James Bush is giving him that spot. Brad Keselowski trying to work his way towards the front of the field. He's into the eighth spot right now. On board right now with Clint Boyer. We can tell you David Starr too fast entering on that pit stop when he came in for damage. So he'll have to do a pass through. So it, bad news just got a little worse. Paul Menard, a first look at uh, he and Stephen Wallace as they are battling it out for the 10th position. We'll let you know David Starr is doing his pass through right now. He uh, finished 15th in the truck race last night in his 25th truck start here at Texas Motor Speedway. 17 is the laps we're working right now. There's your top five here at Texas with Kyle Busch out in front. Does that surprise anybody? After all, he's only won the last five. Everyone? NASCAR.com. Check it out. Make sure to go to Goodyear.com to check out Goodyear Support Our Troops program. There you can send a thank you message from a NASCAR driver, enter for a chance to win a 2011 Ford Taurus, and other great prizes. Three cars have uh, parked it already. Dennis Setzer is officially the first out of this race. Uh, LePage and Eflin are listed as behind the wall and off. Battle for fifth right now that we're looking at. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. trying to hold off Martin Truex Jr. Battle of the juniors. If we yeah. get Dale Earnhardt out here, that's a trifecta. What a great job Ricky Stenhouse has done throughout the year. Just becoming more familiar with these race cars. And the City Financial Ford is really running well today. But you have to give a big call to, to Ricky. You know, he, a lot of people were down on him early in the year. But Jack Rouse stuck with him, gave him the opportunity, and they've made the most of it. Well, he had five DNFs for crashes in the first 12 starts of 2010. Zero DNFs in the last 17. That's the big difference. Left side of your screen, you can see Trevor Bain and Stephen Wallace going after each other. That is for position 10th, to be exact. We know Jack Roush is not afraid to take a chance on young talent. You see right here the 17, Trevor Bain in the white car, unsponsored. He's put him in a car after he lost his ride over there with Michael Walter Bracing. Doing a good job. Here's another pass. How about a battle for fourth? Ricky Stenhouse Jr. going after our pole sitter, James Busher. Doesn't have him clear yet, but he's close. He's got him now. Yeah, Ricky Stenhouse said earlier that he really liked his race car uh, yesterday in practice. The 30 car's falling back to fifth, Jamie. James Busher, our pole sitter, yes, he has slipped back a few spots. He's saying he's tight on exit. That is why he's lost a little bit of speed. Remember, this is just his 22nd start in the Nationwide Series. He had a great run of the Truck Series last night, battled from mid-pack up to sixth. He's hoping for his first top five today. Uh, with this series is, is all impound races so if you sit on the pole it usually means you've got a car that's a little bit tighter and it's again running that fast lap but it does seem to come back to haunt you in the races and that might be one thing this is kind of a young team new team they're probably learning some of that now they've learned how to make her go fast now they have to learn how to make it stay fast well and you saw just how quickly brad keselowski blew past to take over the fifth spot here comes martin truex jr as well 
and as a driver and a young driver, you have to learn how to adjust that too. That's just part of the learning curve that people like we talked about. Ricky didn't have, but James Bush will have to go through the same thing, learning exactly uh, how much he can do with that race car and how much freer he can make it to make it go in a longer run. So Truex is clear. Joey Logano is trying to get around him as well. Let's get an update on the 99, Dave. And it's that freer that Martin Truex Jr. is looking for as well in that 99 car. He said it's just a little snug in the center. I need that front grip in the center of the corner. And that's why, really, he hasn't made up much ground from his uh, sixth place starting spot, guys. He started sixth in the day, and there it is. Currently six. He started six. He's gone nowhere. Well, he backed <laughs> up a little bit. Now he's uh, rallying back, so... Starting to go in the right direction. Yeah, these guys are facing a little different racetrack than what they had yesterday during their practice, even though there would have been a lot going on. But we had a truck race here last night, then two practice sessions for the uh, cup cars here today. So there's a lot more rubber down, and that's probably more of what they're fighting, uh, with trying to get these cars to turn, and everybody talking about a tighter situation. Boy, Joey Logano on the high side makes it look easy. As he goes around, Martin Truex Jr. takes over that spot. So move him into the sixth position. Back even further in the field. How about a battle for 15th? The 11 of David Rudiman, the 12 of Justin Allgaier. And Allgaier, of course, part of that big announcement yesterday that he'll be moving on to Turner Motorsports next season. Let's get more from Vince. Well, and Allgaier uh, bumped into Steve Turner at Talladega last week and asked Turner about a possibility of running for his team next year. And he said, well, give me a call early in the week. Allgaier did, and by Wednesday, they had a deal. Smart move if you're Steve Turner. Certainly, Allgaier has shown his worth this year with a win at Bristol in March, and he's the highest uh, pointed nationwide only driver, fourth in points. As far as his car today, a little bit loose. He said he expected it to be uh, not quite to his liking in the early going, but he still managed to move up some spots. He started 20th. He says it's still a little bit too free. Well, and we'll get back to that as you look at this battle right here with Menard side by side with Martin Truex Jr. because it could be a $150,000 bonus payday for Justin Allgaier. We'll explain that as the day progresses. It has to do with the nationwide dash for cash. Right now, we're watching Menard put the 99 one position back. So Paul Menard on the move. That's the 23 of uh, Richardson. He's in 36 right now, one lap down. So is Kenny Wallace. He's running 35th, one lap down. There's your top five after 31 laps here in Texas. Anywhere. Call 1 877 AFib Stroke today. Back here at the Great American Speedway, you're looking at our race leader, Kyle Bush. He has now led 32 of the 36 laps run. We can also tell you that Tim Andrews has taken his car behind the wall, as is David Gilliland. David Starr's also gone behind for more repairs. We already told you about Eflin LePage and Setzer. So that gets you updated on that. So far, 26 cars still on the lead lap. And there is Kyle Busch. Let's listen on the radio for this conversation on this lap. I'm fine, see you. It's not bad getting into one, but it's a little bit free before the center, through the center. Um, you're trying to get back to the gas wide open, and, uh, and it's out. And then once the track starts leveling off, the front end lifts, and it's okay. It's free all the way into three. diagnose it well i mean just good good information you know he gives you all that it's a little bit free here in the corner he says just a little bit before he's getting to the you know to the center and then he's you know turning the steering wheel it's all of that right there gives a crew chief a lot to work with and uh, it's good that kyle can do that and he's got this big enough lead he can talk all the way around the racetrack i'll say at 185 <laughs> miles an hour he gave him a full lap around there full description of what was going on but yeah, that is what uh, helps make Kyle Busch the driver that he is, is because he is really good at dissecting uh, each part of the corner and letting the crew chief know exactly what they need, what he is fighting, and uh, how they can go about making changes then with their car. And he keeps opening up the lead. You notice it's 2.59 seconds. It was 2.39 in the lap prior over second place Carl Edwards. Kevin Harvick is in third. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is up to fourth. Brad Keselowski rounds out your top five. And we can tell you that... Uh, Kislowski has been on the march since the start. He's picked up 11 spots. The biggest mover since the start of the race was Michael McDowell. He's picked up 15. Eric Darnell into pit road as we look at Kevin Harvick right now, third after starting second. And we're only on lap 41. 
And Darnell's in for his first pit stop. There you see him on the left side of your screen. same problems a lot of guys are having in the car just slipping and sliding and just he said there's just no grip out there as if the rear of the car is driving the car I had to come in and get some fresh tires on thought they might have a tire going down to get a chance well we have been green since the start of the race uh, he was 23rd on the racetrack and right now he is one lap down battle for 11th right now yeah i got to give jeremy clemens a call right here he has really been driving forward in this race uh, almost matching lap times with kyle bush with his uh, zero four Boudreaux's butt pace car, and uh, he makes the pass on Stephen Wallace. Well, and he he's close to the top ten. I'm he, sorry, that's all right. He finished tenth at Gateway two weeks ago. That was his career best. Doc, uh, this team's uh, doing really well today. It is remarkable, Marty. They have very little, if any, sponsorship. You mentioned the sponsor a moment ago, but they have a lot of desire and a lot of talent. They have crew chief Ricky Pearson. That is the son of David Pearson, the brother of Larry Pearson, calling the shots on pit road. Clements Automotive, it is the family business that builds these engines, and this race car is one they bought from Richard Childers. They're trying to put it all together to get a top 10 run here, and this young man, 25 years of age, doing a heck of a job. And one car in the wall, guys. Yeah, yeah, it looks like James Busher may have blown that right front by Come being on. too tight. Uh, you saw him falling back. See a lot of damage there. So tough break for our pole sitter. You can see the whole right side of the car is pancaked. They won't run. And we now have our first caution. And we've seen him really sliding oh, backwards. Oh, yeah. Man, that tire just comes apart. Oh, wow. That was that's a hard lit. hit right huh. there. So a tough break for the 20-year-old. Jamie, what are you hearing? The timing was just off, Marty. James Busher was just told to come down pit road. That's exactly when the tire let go. He felt it going down. They were going to pit early just to fix the issue. Unfortunately, they were just a couple seconds off, guys. He is going back to the garage, as you see him there. First time pole sitter here at Texas. So a tough break for James. As we're under our first caution here on that's, lap number 44. That's also a tough break for uh, Eric Garnell. He made a pit stop under green and just gone back out there, so it's going to cost him. That's a good opportunity for a lot of guys that are trying to get on pit road here to make some changes to their cars. Here comes Kyle Busch. Now, Darnell's actually two laps down at this point. Here they come down pit road. Let's end it today. Burns. Leader Kyle Busch is on pit road. He looks like he's gone into his pit box pretty hard and up, overshoots up, it. Up, he does back up. They'll get a track bar adjustment. Uh, one round down on that for Kyle's car to add grip. Doc. Brad Keselowski said it's very, very tight in the middle in three and four. Loose coming off. They're going to put four tires on it, fill it up with Sunoco fuel, make a chassis change. Vince. Center of the screen, Kevin Harvick, very loose. Two rounds of wedge in the left rear for Carl Edwards. He's a little free in and free out, so they made a track bar adjustment and air pressure adjustment, both right front tires as you see him racing off. And as we take a look at our nationwide insurance race off pit road, you can see Carl Edwards, Kevin Harvick, Ricky Stenhouse all pick up a spot each at the expense of our former race leader, Kyle Busch. Eric Almarola, biggest gainer there. He gets into the top 10 coming off there. That's plus seven. And look at Clint Boyer, top of your screen. They're pushing him, trying to get him refired. That looks like it's stalled or something. Push him back, guys. Push him back. He had started fifth in this race, dropped back to like 14th through this first round of pit stops, and now this is going on. What's happening, Jamie? Clint Boyer is yelling that something's wrong with the carburetor, and ironically enough, yesterday in qualifying, he had a similar issue. It took a while for it to get fired, and once he did, and you see him fire it up there, he's down and away. Guys, remember, this is the last time this 21 car will run. Kind of a sentimental day for this Richard Childress Racing Crew Nationwide Series. Five championships with this number. This is their last hurrah, and they're hoping to get back out there and get back up to the front as they've lost many positions, Marty. He came in 17th on this round of pit stops, and he's going to be back at the back of the lead lap. The lucky dog will go to Ricky Carmichael, and this is why we're under our first caution of the day. A tough one for James Bush. Vegas. Fast, fun, loud, perfect. Don't forget Verizon Wireless customers text CHAMPION to 43776 for exclusive champion chats. It's content from our NASCAR Now roundtable of experts. As Justin Allgaier, you're on board with him right here in 10th position as we're getting ready to go back to green after our first and only caution. And uh, we noticed uh, Kyle Busch 
had uh, problems on pit road. And let's go back and revisit what actually happened. Well, he slid through his pit stall. And you see that right side kind of shows that up because he had to back up before they could start changing that right side. And that's what it cost him all the time. You see the jack and the left side were pretty equal to Carl Edwards, but he lost all that time having to back up. One wave around for Eric Darnell. And let's go back and show you exactly what happened. Let's get a quick moment here. He's ducking in here, trying to make up just a little bit of time. It's on the brakes and slides just over that line. And let's listen to the radio. Sorry I overshot, but guys, come on. I need some help backing it up. I can't always put it in reverse. If I blow out reverse, it's going to be big. It's M4. It's M4, man, you were just barely there. I think they thought you made it. You were just barely over. We'll get ready for another stat for Kyle. You know the 39 laps he's led so far, guys? He has now crossed 2,000 laps led in 2010 in just 27 starts. Pretty amazing. He is already the all-time lap leader in the series. Second on the win list, closing quickly on Mark Martin. Let's reset it for you. We've got Carl Edwards, Kevin Harvick up front with Ricky Stenhouse and Kyle Busch in row two, then Brad Keselowski, Jason Leffler, Joey Logano, Eric Almarola, and now rounding out the top ten, Justin Allgaier and Martin Truex Jr. Green flag flies. Carl Edwards on the low side. Gets a good jump on Harvick. He did. Let's see where Kyle Busch goes and how quick he can get back to the front right here on that high side. He'll get challenged right now yeah. by Brad Keselowski down on the bottom. He does. Keselowski has the low line. They're side by side. Now, all of a sudden, that momentum's starting to kick in for the 18. See Joey Logano right behind Brad. So Carl Edwards leads another lap. A little further back. Some side by side action. Almost three wide there. Yeah, you see Clint Boyer. He had that problem on pit road where his car stalled. Jeremy Clement also had a... A long stop down there. Lost about 10 spots on pit road after driving almost into the top 10, just uh, outside in 11. Yeah, Boyer restarted 22nd. He has already jumped up to 16th in one and a half laps. Yeah, really expected a lot more from his 21 car today in Clint Boyer. I mean, a lot of people in the garage area thought that they were pretty quick during practice session yesterday. He's uh, side by side with the 09 of Brian Scott and the 17 of Trevor Bain. You can see Clint wanting to stick his nose in here in between, but thought better of it. In case you missed Countdown, of course, Brian Scott's one of the guys that's got employment for next year. He's going to be driving for Joe Gibbs Racing. He's right in front of Clint in that 09. And those rookie stripes will be coming off in three more races. How about Kevin Harvick along with Ricky Stenhouse Jr.? Battle for second, and we're hearing maybe a problem, Vince? Exactly, boy. The 33 pit crew jumped up quickly, getting ready possibly for a pit stop as Harvick believes he's got a loose wheel. So look for cars to go by him and Harvick to possibly be heading for pit road. The one guy that you guys thought might be able to challenge, Kyle Busch, and there goes Kyle right past him. Yeah, that was one of the Achilles heels of this team has been that pit crew. You know, they've had good cars on a lot of races. and they're making I can't see Billy, so all right, he said vibrating so bad he can't see. Yeah, and he's talking about the mirror. He can't see the guys around him, and a lot of times, I mean, it, it will get so bad that you literally can't hardly see out the front either, but he's talking more about the mirror vibrating, so that tells you that it is uh, something with one of the tires or wheels, and whether it be a weight or whatever, but see how much it's bouncing around. Look at the way he's hacking hex on that wheel. How long are you going to put up with that, Dale? I mean, if you, if you think it's a loose wheel, how, long, how many laps do you want to stay out there? Yeah, not many. At the speeds that you're running here, his situation, uh, you know, I know this is his own team, but, you know, he is battling for a championship in the Sprint Cup Series. Harvick right now losing ground. He's back to fourth. Yeah, you see the speed's entering the corner uh, over 180 miles an hour. You don't want to have a wheel come loose or actually break the center out. That's one of the, the problems that you can have. If that wheel is vibrating loose, you'll end up breaking that center out and lose the whole wheel. Good battle going on for Reed Sorensen and the 66 of Stephen Wallace. They're duking it out for a position on the racetrack. That's 11th and 12th, and Sorensen takes over that spot. 
Yeah, Reed's been moving forward since the drop of the green flag. Really, see Boyer trying to make his move inside of Brendan Gone. Yeah, Brendan, a new dad just recently. Wife Tatum gave birth to young Michael. Congratulations to the whole family. Everybody's doing fine, we hear. You mentioned Boyer. He's up to 15th now. Remember, he restarted in 22nd. Right side of your screen. You've got uh, Martin Truex Jr. going underneath the 12 of Justin Allgaier for seventh. Battle for the race lead. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. says, teammate, I'd like to take it away from you, and he has. How about Ricky Stenhouse Jr.? Just driving his way right to the front, passing Carl Edwards, former champion of this. So has to feel really good about what's going on here now. I was kind of keeping one eye on him, watching him run second, wondering how long it was going to take Kyle Busch to get by. Yeah. Heck, he passed Carl. Drove off. Let's get an update from Pit Road. How about it, Jamie? Well, they made one small adjustment on this car, and it has come to life. Of course, he was tight before the round of stops, just like everybody else. They made a wedge adjustment, and that car is going to the front. Ricky, though, was very confident coming into this race. As you guys remember, in the spring here, he got together with his own teammate that took him out. But up until then, he was running top ten. He doesn't want to be reminded of that. But he is, here's another interesting fact. He's the only driver in the top 11 right now without a nationwide series win. A little bit further back in the field, you've got the teammates from Rusty Wallace Racing going side by side with uh, Brendan gone underneath uh, Stephen Wallace. Oh, Brian Scott gets a little bit of a run there on Stephen. He's looking back. Yeah, battling his car. You get up on that high side. And again, both of these exits at turns two and four really flatten out quickly from the banking. You have to really be careful not to get yourself in the wall. Mike Bliss is in that mix with the 40, and so is Michael Annette in the 15. That is all four position on the racetrack. Ryan Scott, five points behind our race leader, Ricky Stenhouse, in the Rookie of the Year battle. He's trying to work his way back up front. Right now, he and Annette take the low line, and on the high side here, we'll split in the middle. We're going to try and kick a field goal, maybe, with Bliss. He thinks better of it. <laughs> you can see Michael Annette just looking for somewhere to go. He got a big run off of turn two. That got him right up in the mix with these cars. He can get a little bit more air back to the nose of his car, probably losing the front end just a little bit right at that point. All this still going on from 16th, 17th, 18th, and 19th positions. Three wide again. Meanwhile, more action a little bit further up. That way we can give it both to you as Martin Truex Jr. is duking it out with Joey Logano. Now, it looks like the adjustment they made on this 99 car has really helped Martin Truex right now. He gets past Logano and pulls away. Brian Scott on the left side has now opened up the margin on the rest of that group. And now Michael Onnett's pushing Stephen Wallace potentially back another position. So Wallace has lost about three spots. And he may lose even more because here comes Jeremy McClements. Those five have sort of settled down for the moment. There's your race leader by 1.7 seconds over Carl Edwards with Kyle Busch now running in third. But it's Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Does he get the big win today? It never was. Tuesday at 8, part of ESPN Films 30 for 30. Let's check the motorsports calendar for you now as NASCAR Now will be on tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. and the post-race wrap-up at 10 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2. And then our Sprint Cup Series race in Texas presented by GoDaddy.com will be on the air on ESPN at 3 o'clock Eastern on Sunday. And our next stop for the NASCAR Nationwide Series will be at Phoenix. It's presented by Dodge, 4 o'clock Eastern, next Saturday on ESPN2. So as we have... Beautiful sunshiny day here at Texas Motor Speedway. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has opened up a 2.7 second lead over Kyle Busch. Carl Edwards is back in third spot. Kevin Harvick is fourth. Brad Keselowski rounds out your top five. We were checking on Kevin Harvick before the break and heard him talk about the vibration so bad he couldn't even see out the mirror. And uh, let's go back to the Craftsman Tech Garage with Tim Brewer. And Tim, what do you have? 
Thanks. What we got have here, folks, this is a half ounce wheel weight. It's so critical to balance these tires to keep the vibrations out of the car. But when you've got a loose wheel, you've got lug nuts possibly missing. But you see how this wheel rocks right here? That's where the wheel's been left loose. Anytime you got a severe vibration like that, you run the risk of either breaking the wheel stud, tearing the center out of the wheel, but in either case, you don't leave a race car driver out on the racetrack in this situation, especially when he's competing for a championship. Guys? Pretty stern words from Tim. You agree with him there, Chris? Well, I mean, he is going for a championship in the Cup Series tomorrow. That's the big prize. Yeah, I still have to say that I would trust Kevin to know whether he needs to come or not. Yeah, and I think a lot of times that you feel that right after a restart, low air pressures, could have lost that, that wheel weight, but as it, the air pressures build up, then that tire finds a way to balance out a little bit more, and it's not as bad. So I would have to trust Kevin's judgment on this. He certainly knows the whole situation. You see the number 27 of Alex Kennedy. He was the car that had the off-road excursion and hit the wall earlier in practice that uh, got Brad Keselowski off into the grass as well. Side-by-side -side action with David Rudiman right in front of him trying to get around. Justin Allgaier, they're still banging on each other. Allgaier, we mentioned the fact that this could be a very big payday for him. If he can't win this race, the one guy he would love to see win it would be Kyle Busch. Here's the reason why. Kyle is not eligible for the $75,000 winner's bonus that is carried over from the other races. He's also not eligible for the year end. Guess who would get it? The highest point scorer, and that would be, as it stands right now, Justin Allgaier, 150,000 big ones. That's a lot of money for uh, for this series, and, and uh, you know, it's a big prize. He, if he can't win the race, he's probably hoping that Kyle Busch or somebody ineligible can win it. Yeah, it would have to be one of the cup double duty drivers other than that man right there, Brad Keselowski and Carl Edwards. They have run every race. They can claim the $75,000 race bonus. Let's get an update on the 22. How about it, Dr. Jerry Punch? Marty, a little bit nervous down here in the Brad K. Pitts because about 10 laps ago, Brad Reddy said, I have a vibration in the right front. And they've been monitoring his radio each successful lap and said, you know, let us know what's going on. And Brad says it isn't getting any worse, but it's also not getting any better. So they're going to watch very, very closely. Brad has backed up his corners and it's sort of backed off a little bit right now, sitting uh, in fifth position. Vince. Well, and right in front of Brad Keselowski is Kevin Harvick, and we've documented how Harvick thought maybe he had a loose tire after that uh, first pit stop. Well, Harvick is going to come in now, so keep an eye on Kevin Harvick. He's getting ready to make that pit stop. He's tolerated it long enough. We heard the radio with him saying that it was vibrating so badly he couldn't see and use the mirror, and uh, another car getting ready to get around him, so Harvick is coming in to the pits. By the way, his cut crew hitting him since Charlotte, taking over for the Nationwide guys who had been pitting him. So the two cars on your screen right there, both of them suffering from a vibration problem. The 33 apparently a bit more serious, but he stays out for another lap. It's Eric McClure in the 24 that they are going around right now. McClure running 33rd position. He's two laps down. Yeah, it's just the hardest thing as a driver. You're sitting there in the top five, and you know it's not a good thing to stay out there, but you just don't want to give that up, thinking, just hoping that there may be a caution and it not be you. Find out if Kevin decides to come down this time. Looks like he's still got the hammer down, and he will stay out for another lap. While all this goes on, our race leader is Ricky Stenhouse Jr. We can tell you he leads Kyle Busch by 2.4 seconds. The battle for seventh continues as Justin Allgaier and David Rudiman keep oh. going after each other. And boy, Beak gets it a little loose. What you call a slide job literally right there. Right up in front of Justin Allgaier, but able to keep control. Let's update you a couple of more cars. Uh, James Busher is officially listed as now out of the race, and Michael McDowell has pulled behind the wall. David Starr is back out on the track. He is 39th, 2155 laps down. Keslowski going side by side with Martin Truex Jr. now tucks in behind him, so Truex will hold on to that fifth position. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., a leader. He's led more today than he has in his previous 29 starts combined this season. Is your way of automotive brand? 
Caution out for the second time in the race. Leaders are on pit road, Dave. Kyle Busch has a slight air pressure adjustment and full of Sunoco fuel. Four tire change for the leader. This the, the 33 of Kevin Harvick, He's, you've heard about his issues with the uh, uh, vibrating car. They're going to put a couple of rounds of, uh, in the track bar, two rounds down on the track bar. The 60 of Carl Edwards is a little too tight, two rounds a wedge in the left rear. He really likes his car otherwise. Jamie? Bottom left of your screen was your leader, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., led 27 laps, but he gets passed on pit road, loses two positions. It was a track bar adjustment, air pressure adjustment. They filled it up with Sunoco fuel. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. down and away in third, Marty. So Kyle Busch reclaims the lead on pit road, something he had not been able to do in that run on the racetrack. You check our nationwide insurance race off of pit road. Stenhouse back to third position on the runoff to pit lane. And the cause of the caution flag for the second consecutive time, uh, debris from a car that had troubles and knocked out the right front, Rusty. Yeah, he's lost two right front tires. It looks like the problem he had earlier affected the thing again that blew another right front tire out. You see debris falling everywhere, so definitely caution's got to come out for all this stuff. David Starr into the wall earlier that his second bit of trouble in this race, James Busher also with a right front problem and a crash that dropped debris and brought out the caution earlier. So Kyle Busch back to the front when we go back racing here in Texas. Welcome back to the O'Reilly Auto Parts Challenge here at Texas Motor Speedway. Make sure to go to NASCAR.com for all your latest NASCAR information. Getting ready to go back to green flag racing after our second caution. Three waiver rounds. Tony Raines, Kenny Wallace, and Robert Richardson, Jr. We have a total of 23 cars on the lead lap. Let's reset it for you. Race leader Kyle Busch up front. He's going to take the low line. Uh, Carl Edwards alongside. Then Ricky Stenhouse, Jr., Martin Truex, Jr., Brad Kislowski, Harvick, Logano, Rudiman, Almirola, and Sorensen. That is your top. Top 10, pace car pulls off, crowd coming to their feet, and we're getting ready to go back to green flag racing here at Texas. Allgaier getting a little high. He makes it through the corner, though. Still side by side. Now, finally clearing is Kyle Busch. I don't think Kyle lifted going down in there. Paul Edwards may have breathed it just for a split second. That's all that Kyle needed. Kyle has been one of four leaders today. He's led the most laps so far of anybody, 43. We told you he's already gone over 2,000 laps led for the season in just the 27th race that he's run this year in the Nationwide Series. A little bit further back there, you see Ricky Stenhouse Jr., who has led more laps today than the rest of the year combined, with his total of 27. Well, you can just see how important pit stops are. You got Kyle Busch out there, clean air. That's the last thing you want to give him. Stenhouse lost a couple spots while he was out there leading. Now he's struggling to try to get back up to the front. He actually lost another spot. Trevor Bain side by side with Justin Allgaier. Those are the two. Uh, Allgaier's first, and Bain is second in that point standing for that bonus money for the nationwide dash for cash. Ooh. See Allgaier get really loose as Bain drove back on the outside of him. Carl Edwards getting a little bit closer to Kyle on this run for the lead. On the left side, still have the battle between Allgaier and Bain. Bain's now got the best of it. Stephen Wallace tucked up right underneath the 12 car. And on the outside, here comes Brendan Gaughan. Yeah, you see Stephen Wallace had to get out of the throttle just for a second. Brendan Gaughan's momentum carried him by. And here goes Paul Menard trying to take another spot. Menard getting back into the mix. He's into the 15th position. He had a tough break. He had to go to the back of the uh, line after the first caution because they had a tire come free in pit road. He's working his way back towards the front now as he's up to 14. Ten car, Ricky Carmichael, and this is unscheduled, Jamie Little. Absolutely. He's got a vibration. Hearing a lot about that today on the left front. They didn't want to take any chances. What they saw with his teammate James Busher earlier, he's going to bring it in. Change tires are calling for a four-tire stop right now. Car here at Texas. 
On the left side of your screen, you can see Martin Truex Jr., Ricky Stenhouse, and Stenhouse goes by and takes over the third spot. So Stenhouse has a good little race car underneath him. Yeah, he really does. And he did a nice job earlier of not pushing the issue whenever he was trapped down at the bottom. That's not his line. Battle for 13th, Paul Menard on the move, trying to work his way back to the front. Vince, what's the latest? Well, Marty, you noted that the fact that they had a penalty after uh, having a tire get away on their first stop. Also, during that first stop, they went the wrong way on their adjustments. So when they came back in on that second stop, they had to make an air pressure adjustment and wedge to not only go back on what they had done the first time, but also to make an adjustment to where they would hope would make the car a little bit better, as you see Keslowski and Harvick going at it on the right side. Yeah, all of a sudden. And everybody's getting a little racy. We've got it on both sides of the screen. Harvick has gotten cleared now as uh, Keselowski's gotten around him. On the left side, Reed Sorensen trying to work his way back forward after losing spots on the last round of pit stops. And he was uh, too fast exiting, and he got the penalty there. And had to work his way back, and he is. He's now in the 16th position. Right behind him, Michael Annette. You see the 21 of Clint Boyer, the update on him. He is in 18th. What's now going on in that 21 car, Jamie? Well, he worked his way back up into the top 15, and then this last round of pit stops, he was really tight. They adjusted on the car, but at the same time, Clint said, guys, there's a wire down here hooked to my throttle cable. I don't know what it is. We need to figure it out. He brought the car back in, continued working on it. For more on this and an explanation, let's go to the Craftsman Tech Garage. Tim Brewer, what do you think he's talking about there? There's only two things hooked to that throttle right here, Jamie. This is the wire that monitors the travel, and NASCAR can tell you exactly where the position of the throttle is throughout the time. But the other, it's a cable that runs here that feeds the information center. But other than that, it's very little pressure that you can put on that right there unless, you know, there's something else dangling down from under the dash. Ain't got a clue what it would be, Jamie. Guys? All right, thank you, Tim. And right now... Battle for third is starting to heat up. Martin Truex is getting a little racy with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. These guys are 1.6 seconds behind our race leader, Kyle Busch, who's now led a total of 52 laps. Here comes Truex again. Truex looks better and better on that low line. Yeah, he is. Ricky Stenhouse is running a little different line. He's uh, running a little higher, especially on his entry to the corner. We'll watch him here through turns three and four. He stays up throughout the corner here. Down in one and two, he'll turn the car back down and try to drive it straight off of turn two so he doesn't mess with that outside wall. And that momentum carried out and lengthened his lead over Martin. Right behind Martin, of course, is uh, Brad Keselowski as he is running comfortably in the fifth position. And that would, of course, clinch the championship if he just stays right there. Let's go back and check in on Clint Boyer. He is now in the 15th spot. Brendan Gaughan is right up on his back bumper. And a little bit further back is Reed Sorensen. You're on board with Clint. Yeah, Clint seems to be a little bit better this run. I don't know if that's been what's causing his problem all day. See this telemetry, the throttle position you see is it's being driven by what we saw Tim show us in that uh, in that cutaway car down there in the Craftsman Tech Garage. And you can see whenever he lets off the throttle, it just you know it activates that sensor, so we can see that. And I don't know if they fixed what the problem was, but it seems like he's better right now. There's the view from outside. Brendan Gaughan, Reed Sorensen, right behind him. There's Michael Annette coming into view as well. Let's go back and check in on our race leader because Kyle Busch, as you see, all the way across the track right now. His lead over Carl Edwards is 1.4 seconds, and he's looking to make it six straight here at Texas. And he's almost halfway there. Great Tuesday at 10 on ESPN. Just past halfway, here's our five-hour energy rapid recap. Lap 11, the first trouble of the day. That was David Starr that got a little jam off turn two, and it ended up collecting Danica Patrick. A little right front damage. The green flag pit stop dropped her two laps down. She's running in 29th position. Then the guy that started on the pole had some big trouble. Yeah, James Busher just pushing the front end real bad. Finally lost the right front tire. Clobbers the mm. heck out of that wall, Brad. Just tore that car to pieces. Well, he did. And so Busher uh, started first. He will finish 37th.
Brad Kozlowski trying to clinch the NASCAR Nationwide Series title today, doing what he needs to. Doing what he does best. He's working his way up towards the front. Currently got himself up to fourth position. Looks like Brad could be poised to win this race by the end of the day. Well, if he's going to win this race, he's going to have to go a ways to catch that man, Kyle Busch, trying to win a record sixth consecutive Nationwide Series race at this one track. Would be an all-time series record if he does it. Kyle has led the most laps today, got behind for a stretch of race. As you see Keselowski going after third spot here on Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Uh, just to finish the Kyle Busch story, got behind when he slid through his pit box on the first stop, got the spot back, the top spot back on the second set of pit stops, and he has not been headed since then. How about this 22 guy, and how about the young kid driving the six car, Stenhouse Jr.? Yeah, that's the one I'm looking at right now, Ricky Stenhouse. I mean, this guy, week after week, has been getting better and better. And we all know the first half of the year was plagued with a lot of rookie mistakes, crashes, stuff like that. But in my book, it looks like he's right at the ship. He's a lot better now, and he's been having good runs in that six car. Yeah, Jack Roush has showed incredible patience with this young man. And even stated earlier in the year that Ricky Stenhouse was going to be a better race car driver by the end of the season. And boy, it's come to fruition. Guaranteed it. Guaranteed that, it. That's race, right. He said, I guarantee the results will be better in the second half of the year. And uh, Jack knew what he was looking at. Can't deny talent. So that the race for third position. As for now, Stenhouse is able to hold off Brad Keselowski, who continues to try and work the bottom side of that racetrack and pick up that spot. Tell you what, the track has got rougher and rougher as the years go on, but it makes for great racing. You can run on the bottom, the middle, and the top of this racetrack. We've seen Stenhouse working the top side. He's been really working that momentum we talked about in Countdown, where you really got to keep these cars wound up a lot to keep them going fast. Does he have him there? Does he have him? Eh, nope. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> I'll tell you what, also Martin Truex Jr. has kind of rolled into the, the, the picture here. He's just kind of stayed around that fifth, sixth position all day long. But he's made himself a part of the conversation, so we're getting top-heavy with some really good race cars, but they all got a go good ways to go to run down Kyle Busch, just like you said, Alan. That was Truex a good bit behind. It's still side-by-side -side race for third place. Uh, if you're with us on Countdown, Brad Kozlowski basically said anything can happen today. you got to go out and just do your job like you do it, basically, in so many words, all year long. Uh, and the job that he's done all year long is running the top five and compete for wins, and he's doing that today after starting a little bit deeper in the field. He took the green flag in 16th spot. Well, he's already went through all the scary things. That happened yeah. on Friday when he had to go through the grass to avoid a car, in his nationwide <laughs> car. Then he just flat lost it in his cup car and went flying through grass and tore that car up. So he's probably thinking right now, I want to wrap this title up today. No mistakes, drive smooth. And it appears that's what he's doing right now. He's got a fast car. It's handling well for him. He's in third position. Hey, what else can you ask for right now? A uh, little move there Brad was familiar with. A pick. Using the lap car, Robert go. Richardson. The pick and roll, if you will, there uh, at 190 miles an hour. Now, I mentioned Danica Patrick earlier. Uh, got bounced off of early in the race. Made a green flag pit stop. Lost a couple of laps. And, uh, David, what's the latest on the seven car? Well, trying to school herself on this very fast racetrack. But it hasn't been all that easy. Here were her comments on the radio a few laps ago. Good thing that did happen earlier today, right after the initial trip to pit road that put her laps down. Kevin Harvick passed her, and she was able to follow him briefly while he spread around the track and learned a couple of things about the lines going into the corner. So another day of education for Danica Patrick. Yeah, Danica said coming into Texas this weekend, this is all still so new. And she's learning as she goes along. It feels like she is learning so much, but it is still all so new. Well, I've been watching her speeds on a monitor. She's top 15 speeds right now, so she's got a fast car. She has recovered from that body damage. Looks like at the right front fender, fixing Danica's car from the crash earlier. That wasn't her fault. So uh, it, it, the speeds are there. She's just yeah. got to get the laps back. She's two down right now because of that, Brad. That's going to be a difficult thing. I mean, she's running 3130s right now. and. You know, the sixth place car, Joe Legato, is running 31.30, so she's got the speed. It's just a matter of making that track position back up and the learning experience that's going along with Danica Patrick's entry. Just something catches your eye as you watch that picture, that shifter lever vibrating. Vibrating, there. yeah, I saw that. That's yeah. exactly right. Brendan Gaughan, 62. Eric Darnell, 16. Remember, she banged the wall, though, really hard, Alan. 
and, or banged that other car, so she's probably got a little bit of a, could have a bent wheel or something like that, causing that shifter to vibrate just a little bit. This is a race for 17th and 18th spots. A little side-by-side -side going on, a little farther back in the field. Brendan started back in the back and uh, has worked his way up to 17th, picked up about 10 spots. He's got a good race car, just back there tooling along, uh, knocking some laps off. With, who gets about 50 to go and go for it? And here's a guy that's really been on the move, the orange car, David Rudiman, that 11 machine. He took the green flag back in 24th. He's uh, fighting here, trying to hang on to the seventh position. Jason Leffler trying to take that away from him. And uh, Rudiman's had a pretty good role early going here, Doc, huh? He's had a great run out. He said the car takes about eight to ten laps to take off after a pit stop. And he had driven the car up to sixth position. But last lap, actually two laps ago, he bounced it off the wall. He said, I just bounced it off the wall, guys. I have some right rear damage behind the number. He said, but I'm going to stay in the throttle. The car feels good, and I'm going to keep digging. Right now, Rudiman having a really Really good run here at Texas. And again, uh, just gave up the seventh spot to Jason Leffler, Rudiman, 24th to 8th so far today. You can see where the right side of this car scraped up a little bit. Rudiman, I'm not talking about, but it doesn't seem to be hurting it. The body's still out in front of the right rear tire, creating the downforce it needs to have. So uh, I think he might have skirted a bullet there. There's the gap up to the leader, Kyle Busch, who who's opened up a second and a third on second place, Carl Edwards, with 83 laps to go in Texas. Daddy.com. A beautiful day here at Texas Motor Speedway with 78 laps to go here in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. And we want to remind you to join ESPN in support of our troops, our wounded warriors, and their families. You can donate $10 by texting USO to 27722 or go to USO.org. Kyle Busch has now led a total of 79 laps here, and you can see he's in a little bit of a lap traffic. The 27 of Alex Kennedy, he is going around him. Alex is now five laps down. Joe Nemechek is in front of the race leader right now. Nemechek, 23rd position, about to be three laps down. Now you can see from that shot, Carl Edwards is not letting Kyle Busch get out nearly as far as he, uh, as he has today. He's only just a uh, second and quarter ahead. Think Kyle might be playing with him? Uh, I'm not so sure. Maybe. Well, let's find out what's going on as uh, we go up to speed. It's brought to you by Jack Daniels. First up is Dave Burns. If you're just tuning in, Kyle is going for six in a row at the Texas Motor Speedway in the Nationwide Series. That feat has never been accomplished at any track in Nationwide. The string started with Kyle's first win for this 18 crew and when he transferred over to Joe Gibbs Racing, so it's kind of special for him. Most recently, he's reported about his race car. It's turning. Translation, the field's in trouble, Vince. Well, I got to tell you that Carl Edwards feels like he's uh, chasing the guy that he's been chasing all year long. You know, Edwards has finished uh, runner-up five times this season, and that's exactly the position he's in right now. Although he's fairly happy with his race car, although says it does feel a little something in the back that he's not quite sure about. I think we got a little wheel weight or a loose lug nut or something just rumbling in the uh, back like we got a little bit of something there. Other than that, Edwards is happy. They've been massaging on the car throughout the day. He says tighten it up just a little more and we'll be real fast, Doc. And if you just joined our coverage and you're in the numerology, there's the 22 car, Brad Keselowski. He's trying to become the 22nd different driver to win the NASCAR Nationwide Series Championship in the 29-year history of the series. He said, all I got to do is finish 21st, but these guys, they want to go out with a victory and a championship. They made a slight air pressure adjustment on the previous stop, and Paul Wolf told him, we're not going to do much, but whatever you did, according to the driver, it was enough. The car has taken off and now moved all the way up the third spot. Hey, Martin Truex runs fourth. His car a little bit tight in the center, a little snappy loose from the center off. He's looking for an adjustment and looking to hold off Joey Logano if he can do that. His little brother Ryan is at the track today. Ryan is scheduled to run the final two events of this season. That would put him at eight events run this year. That's too many to be a rookie next year. They're trying to encourage Martin to run the car at Homestead instead of Ryan. Not just so that Ryan can win the Rookie of the Year title next year, 
but rookies get an extra set of tires all year long during practice, and they'd love to have that advantage for young Ryan next year. Jamie? And the man trying to take that position from the big brother is Joey Logano. He's used a word like terrible to describe his race car today. Started 10th, and he is the first to tell you this is one of his worst racetracks. Why? Because the overall lack of grip. He likes a tighter feel in his car, and of course, he has been loose all day. But the adjustments as he ducks to the inside are making an improvement. He said this is the best the car has felt all day. Marty? Thank you, Jamie. As these two continue to go side by side, Joey not able to clear him, and here comes Ryan right back on him. And he gets clear space in return, but not for long, because Joey's down on that bottom. They're going to split the uh, 27 car of Alex Kennedy. And Joey is out in front. Pit stops are now happening. Dave Rudiman, Doc. We told you he had bounced it off the wall when he was running six. He had dropped, dropped all the way back to 13th position. He said the car had just gotten so very tight because of tagging the wall. He decided to come in and pit a little bit early, put four tires, take a look at the right side damage, fill it up with fuel, and they're going to go back around, pull those fenders out on the right front and right rear. He said the car was so tight he couldn't get it to turn. Now he is down on the way. He will have to pit once more between now and the checkered flag. So he is the first to make the second round of pit stops under green flag conditions. He was off sequence just a little bit further. So we're going to step aside quickly because the rest of the field, including our race leader, should be heading for pit road soon with 69 laps to go in Texas. What do you need? NASCAR.com has it. NASCAR.com. Check it out. Back here at Texas Motor Speedway, the O'Reilly Auto Parts Challenge at Texas with 65 laps to go. Our race leader is Kyle Busch. We'll tell you that during the break, the six of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. made a pit stop, and he had dropped back to 10th before the stop. There he is back out on track. What was going on, Jamie? He was falling like a rock. He absolutely was. He was complaining the car was getting extremely tight, especially in the sun. Well, most of this track is still in the sun, so the car is just going away. They decided to bring him in a little bit early. One and a half rounds out on the left rear wedge we're talking about here. Four tires for Ricky Stenhouse. Try to get him back up there. He is 19th right now. One lap down. One of two cars that is a lap down. Stephen Wallace is the other. There are only 17 cars right now on the lead lap. And there you see our race leader. He's got a little bit more company because Carl Edwards is closed, guys. You see how much Carl is closed in. Run a little higher line than what Kyle Busch has been running. It's allowed him to close up here in just a couple of car lengths. Kyle right now has led a total of 95 laps with 62 to go. We can tell you he has clinched the most laps led. Again. Again. Ooh, little wiggle there. They make these green flag stops. They should be able to make it to the end. It's like Kevin Harvick's making his now. Wait to see if, looks like the 60 is going to pull, pull down as well. Here comes Harvick. Vince? Well, the 33 of Kevin Harvick, he's been frustrated throughout the course of the day. Said he felt like they had a bad adjustment on the first pit stop. They dropped the lug nut on the second pit stop. And remember, these are his cup guys going over the wall during this nationwide race today. So they're going to work on the car a little bit more today, trying to get it to his liking. Dave? As a uh, four-tire pit stop going on, really tight this run. Four tires and adjustments. He's gone. Vince? 60 of Carl Edwards is in. Carl said he thought he maybe had a tire going down. The car's just a little bit loose. They're going to make a track bar adjustment for Carl. He says if you can snug it up just a little bit, I think we're going to be real good. Dave? Here comes your leader. Kyle Busch is on pit road. He hits his marks perfectly this time. Angles in just a little bit. There will be a wet track bar. Looks like a wedge adjustment now for the 18. He was saying it was turning us a little bit, but they're trying to keep up with it. Four tire stop for Kyle. Remember, on and off pit road, the key at this point during green flag stops. Shelby Howard is in and gone. There goes Leffler. The 18 is gone as well, Doc. 38 car, Jason Leffler running just outside the top five in sixth position. So the car is sliding a nose, coming up off the corner very, very tight. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment and put four tires on it. Jason said, all I want is a top ten or top five finish these last three races to build momentum for next year. He 
is down and away. Here comes Brad Kay, our points leader and possible champion when his day is done. The car was really, really good when they made only a very mild adjustment last stop. Only a slight air pressure change. They pull a tear off off the windshield. Left side tires going out. They top it off with Sunoco Fuel. Should be the final stop if we stay green. Hey, Martin Truex is on pit road. He got a wedge adjustment full of fuel, four tires, and he's out of here. Jamie. Joey Logano's in. As I've been saying, he's free. They're going to go down on the track bar. Wedge adjustment, four tires. He's down and away. There's the 12 of Justin Allgaier. Allgaier's been fighting a loose race car throughout much of the day, and then after the first stop, it was a little bit too tight. He says that right now that uh, it's a little bit better uh, without hurt. He got to turn a little bit better without hurting the entry. That was his concern, so they're going to make an air pressure adjustment. Four tires for Justin Allgaier. Stop completed for Allgaier on the right side of your screen. Our race leader, Eric Almarola. He is our sixth different leader. We've had a total of six lead changes. And Allgaier, along with Joe Nemechek, pulled back out onto the track. You notice all Almarola signaling to everyone behind him. Left hand out the window. I think he's coming this time. He'll slow down to 45 miles an hour and make the long trip down pit road. Let's send it to Dave Burns. And it's actually a quick stop, Marty. <laughs> the long trip will be after he makes this four-tire stop. His car was much better on this run. He was pretty happy with it running eight before the round of pit stops started. He said you made it turn a lot better. They'll change four tires, fill up full fuel, and get him back out there. And you're right, Dave, that being the first pit in, a very short in, but a very long out, and it's 45 miles an hour as he makes his way back out onto the track. What it means is that Kyle Busch will cycle through and maintain or regain the race lead. Battle for sixth right now as there is Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Martin Truex Jr. going after each other. And Stenhouse, uh, this stop really helped him. Yeah, they did that right. You know, they got lucky and did not catch a caution during this cycle. And so they made that early stop. They were running about 10th place. Now you see him running in six, so they made up a little ground with those new tires when uh, nobody else had them for a few laps. Yeah, the problem is, did he come in too early? Will he be able to stretch enough fuel here if we happen to go green? Well, if it does go green, I think he will have to make another pit stop. That's the only negative. Stenhouse pitted on lap 134. Our race leader, Kyle Busch, six laps later at lap number 140. Kyle trying to write another page of history here at Texas Motor Speedway. He's got 55 laps to go. People's Spring Cup in Texas, tomorrow at 3 Eastern on ESPN. Well, we're under our third caution, and we had debris. A big brake duck was right in the middle of the race line. They've already been out and picked it up, and we're waiting to see if anybody is going to stop, and Carl Edwards fakes, but uh, doesn't come. What do you think, Crew Chief? Well, they just pitted five, six, seven laps ago, depending on which uh, car you're talking about. Looks like Kevin. He was one of the earlier ones that pitted. He's still going to stay out there. I thought maybe we'd see some of the cars at the back half come in. See these these four cars making a pit stop. David Rudiman, Reed Sorensen, Brendan Gaughan, and Michael Annette. And those guys are on the lead lap. Dave? Well, Reed's car most of the day has been pretty tight. They're just going to top it off with fuel right now and make it to the end. Remember, they were one of the earlier ones to pit on lap 139 before. Doc? And David Rudeman are going to work on the right side. You see him using a sledgehammer for a minor adjustment on that right front fender. They pulled out the right rear, and they said the car just a little bit too snug here because of the damage. Got to put a little bare bond tape, I think, on the right rear if they get time and uh, get him back out. We can tell you Eric Darnell is going to get the lucky dog. That'll give us a total of 19 cars on the lead lap, and we'll go back green when we come back. How are those flat rate balls? This week on ESPN's Monday Night Football, Big Ben and the Steelers head to Cincinnati. They'll face Terrell Owens and the Bengals. Uh, they're hungry for a win over the division leader. Steelers, Bengals, ESPN's Monday Night Football at 8.30 Eastern. Our coverage begins at 7 Eastern. Monday Night Countdown It's served by Applebee's. Right now, it's Kyle Busch in front of Carl Edwards. We're about to close out our third caution. Let's get an update on Edwards, Vince. 
Well, if uh, Kyle Busch is to win his sixth straight here at Texas, he's probably going to have to beat Carl Edwards to do it. Listen to this radio transmission from Edwards. Carl? Yes, sir. Carl said he's driving right there. He didn't know how you was keeping up with him, but yeah, he's worried about you now, just so you know. Good. I'm just kind of cruising, so we'll, uh, we'll race with him pretty good here, I think. Edwards has been real confident of his race car throughout the course of the day. And, of course, this is a uh, nice difference from uh, what it was a year ago here. Remember, they uh, broke an axle exiting their pit box, ended up finishing 30th when we were here in April. And Carl hasn't led a lot of laps here, 11 races here, just 11 laps led coming into today. But he's been up front all afternoon, Marty. That's 11 laps total in his nationwide career here. You're right. And it wasn't one of the guys that we picked. I know. We picked Kevin Harvick. We thought he would be the guy that might be able to beat. Uh, Kyle Busch, but it looks like it might be at Carl Edwards. All right, let's reset it for you. It is Kyle Busch, Carl Edwards, Brad Keselowski, Joey Logano, Martin Truex, Ricky Stenhouse, Leffler, Harvick, Bain, Almirola. We're green. Another good restart for the 18. And Carl said he was just cruising. You know, I found sometimes whenever you're cruising, that's when you go better, and then you start trying to really make that pass, and car doesn't drive quite as good. We'll see if Carl can make it happen here today, though. Brad Keselowski took a peek underneath the 60. And Truex just behind Keselowski. 47 laps remaining. Remember, Kyle Busch won the truck race last night. He almost pulled off the triple here last year. He won the truck race, won last year's nationwide race, and ran out of gas with three to go while leading the cup race. And here we go with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Joey Logano, and that is for fifth. Looks like and Stenhouse's car is back the way it was a little earlier in the race when he was dominant. Of course, Stenhouse leading in the Rookie of the Year points battle. Look okay, here, Carl's going for the lead. Carl's taking a peek on the inside. Keselowski's got the best seat in the house right behind him. And Carl makes it look easy. So Carl Edwards jumps to the race lead here now with 45 and a half laps to go. You know, and Brad Keselowski in that 22 has been steadily moving up to the front. He might have something for him here at the end. Side by side, Stenhouse and Joey Logano still going after each other. That is for fifth. Jason Leffler, and there's Kevin Harvick right behind. That's seventh and eighth place. And Trevor Bain, Bain right now, right ahead of Justin Allgaier. Those are the two that are duking it out for the $75,000 year-end bonus for the nationwide dash for cash. Allgaier leads by 32 points coming in to today's race. That's going to go to the wire, it looks like. What's also going to go to the wire may be our race win and a page of history because Carl Edwards is trying to deny Kyle Busch that sixth straight. You know, a lot of drivers, we might would have said, well, he maybe just wanted to see where he was getting beat or something like that. We know how much Kyle Busch likes to be out front. I think that right now, Carl just has the best race car here. Brad Keselowski closing on the 18. They come across the stripe. Now 43 laps to go. Edwards had the fastest lap of the top three. Keselowski the second fastest. And the 18 was the slowest of the three. Yeah, and what I'm seeing with Kyle Busch, his car's not getting through the center of the corner right now. See, once you see if Brad Keselowski can really get back to the throttle quicker, he really ran up on the back bumper of Kyle Busch down in one and two. So it looks like Kyle's just having a hard time with his car and this set of tires. Dude, I can't go that fast. I'm trying. Well, you heard Kyle say, I can't go that fast. You don't hear that much. They have been dialed on this racetrack. You heard in Countdown, Allen and the crew talking about the fact he led 810 of the previous 1,000 laps. That's right, 81%, and he's led 107 today. But Brad's going to get a run on him right here off turn four. He's inside of him, coming down across the stripe. 41 laps to go, and Keselowski may bump him back to third. Little wiggle for the 18. It's a hard pass to complete right here on the bottom. Kyle almost has a car length back on him, but here comes Brad through turn three. 
And the guy who's loving all this is Carl Edwards. He's opened up almost an eight-tenth of a second lead. Now let's see if Kyle, yeah, he's able to stay in front of the 22. Now, see if he uses that. Sometimes you get forced into situations that move you around on the racetrack, and it actually will pick you up some. On board with Kyle. Well, here, just how quick he gets back to the throttle. Now 39 laps to go, and the lead is now 1.1 seconds. Let's check back a little bit further because here comes Justin Allgaier. As Allgaier has gotten on this horse, he's now up to ninth, closing on Harvick and Ricky Stenhouse. Yeah, Ricky Stenhouse has started to fall back just a little bit again. I think he's still struggling with his race car. And Harvick trying to take that spot away now. And that white 17, that is Trevor Bain. Remember, that's that big, important nationwide dash for cash. If Allgaier can just stay ahead of Bain, he's guaranteed at least 75000 And if Kyle Busch were to win this race, he's ineligible for the other 75000 And that would go to Allgaier if he can stay right there. Still have 38 laps to go before this one's going to be decided. And you better believe Trevor Bain's thinking about that bonus money because here he comes. He's looking down low underneath the 12. Well, Bain doing a really nice job in this Jack Roush car. He has only had a few races there to work with these guys at Roush Racing. Certainly making the most of it. Clint Boyer showing a little life as we go back to the battle for second. Kyle Busch still trying to hold off a charging Brad Keselowski. Yeah, I'm like you, Dale. Right there in turns one and two in the middle, Kyle Busch lost a lot of ground to the 22 car. Looks like Brad might have another run at him. We'll see what he can do down here in one and two. They are 1.2 seconds behind the race lead. This is where Kyle really struggled last lap. Kind of worked it out there. Yeah, he's really trying to search around to see what he can do, but he's just losing a, a tenth, tenth and a half every lap. Dave, you got an update on uh, Kyle Busch? Even when they were way out front, Marty, they were technicians, a little wiggle right there, working on this race car. Kyle working on his line. Jason Ratcliffe working on what he might do to make the car better. And as he continues to get the pressure from Brad Keselowski, his car has gone a little bit to the tight side. Jason told me something yesterday. He said, we're pretty confident about the setup of our car, but what will a warmer racetrack do on race day? That's always a mystery. And right now it's gotten the 18 to the point where it's a little bit tight. He wants to track bar back up a little bit and he's 1.4 seconds behind now yeah and if this race goes green he's not going to make another pit stop to be able to adjust on that car he's going to have to really search around on the racetrack try to find the groove you see that's what brad keselowski's doing right now well, we are on pace for a record setting low number of cautions the old record current record is four we've had three today that last green flag run before our third caution 62 laps That's what 1.3 seconds looks like. That's the margin this time. A little bit further back, here comes Clint Boyer as he's trying to make a charge on Eric Almirola. That is for 12. Yeah, you see Almirola going around Ricky Stenhouse, going to the inside trying to make that pass. Stenhouse car just going away from him once again. Clint Boyer's been probably running higher than anybody else on the racetrack on both ends. He's making it work right now. Ricky led 27 laps today. But right now, it looks like his chance to become a first-time winner here at Texas is slipping through his fingers. Getting word that uh, you notice Eric Almirola and the 21 of Clint Boyer, a little contact. Yeah, they did. Yeah, this is that high line that Clint was running, had a big run, and Eric Almirola didn't realize just how quickly he was coming, slid up in front. How about the battle for seventh right now? Kevin Harvick and Justin Allgaier. And there's Trevor Bain lurking right behind. Th this has got so many subplots to it today. Championship possibility for Brad Keselowski if he just continues to run where he's at. Kyle Busch, if he can win the race, makes history. And a big payday for one of those two guys, either the 12 or the 17. Here comes Bain on the high side of Harvick. So Harvick's car not going in the right direction either. The 
Let's go back to the battle for second. Kyle Busch and Brad Keselowski. Now, I've seen Kyle Busch really search around the racetrack and found a few laps of some speed, but every now and then you see a car slip just a little bit in turn one and two. He can tell he's really fighting a tight situation. It hurts him right in the center, and when he gets back to the gas a little too quickly, then he shoves the nose on the exit of the corner, and Brad Keselowski gets a big run on him. Keselowski right now in that third spot. He entered today with 23 top five finishes in the 2010 season. If he can finish in the top five in the final three races, he would set a new record for most nationwide series top five finishes in a season. Let's get an update from Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, they are counting the laps down here in the uh, 22 pit, Marty, and there is a very nervous mom down here watching. Kay Keselowski there watching her son a moment ago came over to me with a very quivering voice and said, we have waited a lifetime for this moment. She is uh, watching, covering her face intermittently, turning around, spinning circles as he goes by. She knows how much this family and her son in particular have wanted what could happen over the next few laps here if he realizes that dream and wins a championship. How special for a family here today. Well, Doc, I know you remember the uh, Truck Series days when it was Brad's father, Bob, carrying the Dodge banner, and Kay was his spotter up top for him. And, uh, boy, they... they struggled hard and put in a lot of hours and you're right this is a big moment for everybody in that family yeah they've literally made racing it, it has been their life and, and brad's done just really a terrific job since with every opportunity that he's gotten he's done it his way he's driven hard and uh, very well deserving of this championship sort of holding station right now in that third position has not put the pressure on for the last few laps on second place Kyle Busch. Kyle has fallen 1.7 seconds behind Carl Edwards and just as I say he's not putting the pressure on here he comes again. Putting the pressure on here we go he's got to run. He does he's got him on the high side yeah, this time. He have him now. They come across the strike 26 laps to go heading for turn one. Can he carry the momentum? And can he take second place away from Kyle Busch? Let's see, Kyle's going to have a tough time with the tight situation of his car. Carrying the momentum off the corner that he's going to need. Running side by side will only make that worse if you do it for a couple of laps, too. The lead is now two seconds because... He's not giving up, though. He no. slid up in front of Brad. <laughs> what a job uh, Kyle's doing right here. I mean, this, I thought Brad had him right. After he got up on the outside, that Kyle wouldn't be able to come back on the inside. Some great racing between these two. But like we pointed out, it's allowing Carl Edwards to open up the lead. It's now two seconds. Grant's going to try that middle line again. There you can see Carl at the bottom of your screen, the margin back to second and third. Check in once again on Justin Allgaier and Trevor Bain. Remember, these two have a lot at stake as well, and they are glued to each other. This is seventh and eighth position. Bain knows he has to get around him, too. Were you ever in that position when you were Bain's age? Yeah. Big, big payday on the line? <laughs> Can you imagine? No, definitely not. No. I don't think I was even driving a race car when I was his age. Certainly weren't any big paydays. No, I can remember. <laughs> Vince, $35. What? <laughs> Vince, what do you have? Allgaier really liked his race car throughout the course of this week. In fact, says it had uh, the drivability that he really hasn't had here in the past. So he was optimistic that he would have a good day today. And they've really been running well. Five straight top tens. In fact, he was third each of the last two races. So they anticipated having a solid day today. Says the car's a little bit tight, but okay. Hasn't complained much today at all, other than loose, loose, loose that first step. Well, they're side by side right now. The 19-year-old Trevor Bain, the 24-year-old Justin Allgaier. Oh, so close for both of them. Remember, Allgaier has a 32-point lead in that nationwide dash for cash. We may need the officials to figure this out if Bain can get ahead of him. It just shows the type of talent that we're going to have 
few years to come in this nationwide series too because both of these young men have shown that they have the capabilities of driving these cars fast and up front. Justin Allgaier enters this race with a five race streak of top 10 finishes. He's never finished in the top 10 in six straight. Right now he has that chance. He's running seventh. While that battle has settled down, let's go back up front. Check in on Carl Edwards because his lead is now up to 2.2 seconds, guys. And I think we're all surprised. Yeah, I'm surprised. I didn't think he would be the one that would be challenging Kyle Busch and actually out in front of him now. Just, uh, like I say, pulled him up two, over two seconds. Fancy, he's got that 60 car rolling. Boy, he sure does. And you know, after Gateway a couple of weeks ago, Carl was pretty vocal about the fact that he felt they were down on horsepower. Well, they actually took the motor out of this car that they were planning to run in this 60 machine here today. They took that motor out and put in one of Carl's favorite motors. And it's been quite interesting. He hasn't complained at all about power this weekend. And we're seeing some power out of the 60 today. He watch his favorite motor. <laughs> Of course, Carl will start third in the cup race tomorrow. Boy, what a way to go into it if he can hold on for this win. Two-second lead over Kyle Busch. Saw the hand gesture. And I promise you, you start talking anything about a little lack of horsepower, Doug Yates takes that personally. Uh, you know, I know that Carl wasn't calling Doug out, but he's just saying yeah, he felt like that's maybe where they were getting beat a little bit. And, Nobody better than Doug and his team people building engines there for these Fords. Next time by, we will have 17 laps to go. And while it looks like Kyle may not get his page of history, the man right behind him is. Well, I'm not so sure. I'm looking at this, this gap now down to 1.77 seconds on the lead. I know Carl's been in a little bit of traffic, but Kyle Busch has been relentless on trying to find a line of speed here, and he looks like he's found something. We'll keep tabs on that, and of course, you see Brad taking it easy there, and he gets the hand gesture from Robert Richardson saying, go down low, I'll give the spot to you. Richardson is 28th place right now. He is four laps down. Yeah, and you can see Brad uh, probably a little easier right there, knowing the situation, knowing that if he just can finish out these last 16 laps, that he's going to be the nationwide champion. Parker Kligerman also gets past. Uh, in fact, oh, Kligerman and Richardson. Right there. Oh, look out. That is uh, more position. Around. They're both four laps down, and he gets turned. Okay, it's a new race here. And that's exactly what Kyle Busch wanted to see. This is going to tighten this up with now 15 laps to go hey. next time by. Yeah, you hear Carl Keep it rolling. Get it rolling if you can. It looks like we hit pretty hard right there. Now, these two were battling for position, albeit four laps down. Yeah, you can see the 42 car hit one of those bumps that we've talked about down in turns one and two. That caused him to go up the track a little bit, get out of the throttle. Then there was a little contact, it looked like. Actually, did a pretty good job not to hit any harder than he did. Almost missed that inside wall. Yeah, you can see right there as he had to chase it up the track. Hard to tell if there was contact, but it just seemed like there was a little, just as he had to get out of the throttle and go up, catch it. So we've now tied our lowest number of cautions here at Texas Motor Speedway in the NASCAR Nationwide Series with our fourth. And we mentioned the fact that Kyle Busch certainly wanted to see this because it wiped out about a two-second lead that Carl Edwards had built up. And now, what do you do, crew chief? Well, I think this plays into Kyle Busch's hands. His, his pit crew is one of the best on pit road. The left rear. They're going to make a four-tire change here. You heard him talk. Yeah, and then he's one of the best on these restarts. Oh, yeah. Well, the big car are moving. The other question is, remember, we only have five sets of tires on race day. Does anybody have fresh tires left out there? Yeah, that is going to be coming in. They should. Yes, they've got tires left. Almost a jam up as they came down pit road. All right, Dave, set us up. Marty, you heard the adjustments for a car that was killed in the center, according to the driver. Very tight. Four fresh sticker tires and full of Sunoco fuel. Duck. Money stop, maybe a championship stop for Brad Keselowski. Slight air pressure adjustment. Right side tires going on. They will change left as well. Vince. Middle of your screen, Carl Edwards. It's just a little bit free. They're going to put one round of wedge in the left rear. Four sticker tires. Jamie. And Joey Logano, too tight now. Wants to go back on those last adjustments going up on the track bar. Four tires. He's down and away. 
And our nationwide insurance race off pit road. It's Edwards, Bush, Keselowski holding station. Michael Annette takes two tires and picks up a bunch. Truex loses two during his four tire stop. And notice Harvick, he did not gain anything on pit road again. So as we take the commercial break, we'll focus on Carl Edwards' crew as they're trying to deny Kyle Busch a page of history. NASCAR.com. Check it out. Saturday night football continues with a Pac-10 showdown as we've got 15th ranked Arizona against 13th ranked Stanford. It's Saturday night football presented by Southwest Airlines on ABC, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Now, some of the nation will see the Missouri Tigers against Texas Tech. Go to ESPN.com, search maps to see where you can find your game. Back here at Texas. We have about 12 laps to go. It'll be 11 next time by as we're in our fourth caution. And let's talk to our in-race reporter, Brad Keselowski. Hey, Brad. Dale Jeff, ESPN. You have a copy? Yes, sir. Well, you've made a steady uh, move forward all day long. Now it's uh, getting down time to win this race. And we heard you got a perfectly set, uh, match set of tires there, so you got those. But uh, are you thinking more about winning this race right now or the championship? Well, I'm thinking about my crew chief, Paul, a.k.a. Harry Hyde, uh, Wolf. Um, I hope he's right. We'll see. I'm going to give it all I got. Do you think that by what you've seen, uh, we've seen the 60 and the 18 pretty much be the dominant cars, but do you have something for them, you think? Yeah, I do. I, I think we had something for the 18 and 60 there. The adjustment we made to stop before last seemed to really get us going. So, uh, you know, it's clean air. we got to make our move. we got to make it quick. And uh, if we can get to the clean air, I think we'll uh, be color be gone. All right, buddy. You've done a great job today, just like you have done all year. Go get him. Thanks, guys. Well, one guy stayed out on the lead lap, and that was Trevor Bain. And he yeah, is going to be shown as the race leader. Well, we're, the lane he picks is going to be critical on this restart. If he picks the inside lane, that's going to kind of hang Kyle Busch behind him. Now, the significance of Bain obviously staying out, this is his one and only chance, really, to get ahead of Justin Allgaier in this points for that year-end bonus in the nationwide dash for cash. Allgaier did stop. He's going to restart in about the 12th position. Let's get a listen on Joey Logano's radio. Go to the top. Don't be scared. Make it three wide. There's plenty of air up there for no car in front of you. That's, that's, that's easy that's to say. To find it. Yeah, that's easy to say, but he's on the inside. You know what I'm saying? No, yeah, he, that's that guy that said it was on the pit box. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's real easy from there. All right, let's reset it for you. It is Bain up front with Edwards, Kyle Busch, Brad Keselowski, Joey Logano, Michael Annette, Truex, Leffler, Almirola, and Harvick. That is your top ten. Four waiver rounds. Joe Nemechek, Robert Richardson, Kenny Wallace, Eric McClure, Stephen Wallace got the lucky dog. He's the 20th car on the lead lap. And there is Roger Penske on the verge of his first ever NASCAR championship. And the man at the wheel sitting in fourth position for him in that 22, Brad Keselowski. Pace cars pulled off. Trevor Brain, Bain leads the field down. And we are back to green flag racing. There'll be 10 laps to go here in Texas. And look at Kyle cutting to the inside. What a move. Oh, Bain is getting shuffled. Yeah, that was the only thing that Kyle Busch did, and he pulled it off to perfection. He knew that Trevor Bain was going to have a hard time on those older tires. And here comes Kyle, uh, Carl Edwards back on the high side. Side by side as they're going to head into three, and there's a long jam behind them. Look at it, three wide with Harvick in the middle back there as well. Uh, they both get it. Go off turn four. Carl Edwards is going to be your race leader with nine, job, nine to go. go. Kyle Busch is in second right now. Looks like Joey Logano and Brad are going to duke it out for third. See Brad able to get a nice run off of turn two and get that third spot. You saw 38 of Jason Leffler whip out around the 17 of Trevor Bain. Bain is dropping like a rock. And we've still got eight laps to go this time, so plenty of time for Kyle Busch to mount a charge on Carl. He has opened up a three-tenth of a second lead. A little bit further back, Kevin Harvick side-by-side side with Bain. Almirola right behind him. Clint Boyer, Ricky Stenhouse in that mix as well. Whoa! That guy's slipping and sliding, coming out of two. Everybody gathers it up. 
Harvick was one of those that got a little loose. He's still trying to complete the pass on Trevor, and I think he's got him this time he does. Well, Trevor Bain just kind of a sitting duck with those older tires there. See Clint Boyer trying to move forward past Almirola there. These are the fastest laps of the race with these new tires on the leaders down in the low 29 second bracket. The only good news for Bain is Allgaier is still back in 14th. He uh, dropped a couple of spots. Three wide here. Clint Boyer, Reed Sorensen. The man in the middle is Eric Almirola. Bain goes to the high side and he's getting past some more. And there comes the 12 of Allgaier. So that's the best news for Allgaier fans in that dash for cash bonus. I'll tell you, up front, Carl Edwards still leads by half a second. This is where all the action is right this moment. There goes the race leaders. As next time by, we will have five laps remaining here at Texas. Reed Sorensen hugging the bottom. Getting underneath Eric Almirola. And Sorensen going to take over the ninth position. A little bit further back, there is Bain and Allgaier with Eric Darnell in the mix as well. That is all four position, 13th, 14th, and 15th. Brian Scott also in there. Oh, oh. contact into the wall. It's uh, Brian Scott. Hard contact, too. Will it bring out another caution? You see a lot of pieces coming off of that car. Looks like brake rotor parts there. If the caution doesn't come out, they need to look, come on, come on. look for trouble when they get there. Somebody else might try to down. Four laps remaining. So far, we are staying green. Last two laps. Uh, Kyle Busch has outrun Carl Edwards by just a little. You can see the difference on your screen. Here goes Allgaier trying to get around Bain. Bain trying all he can to hang on. I think the 21 car might have run over. Yeah, he got a piece of that debris now. Yeah, so trouble got, for the 21 on the front straightaway. Smoke coming from the right here, front. Clint. So it looks like the final race for, for Clint Boyer and the Richard Childress Racing Organization and in the 21 is out. not going to be the kind of finish they wanted. And you're right, Andy. The fifth caution flag flies. Well, and when you have parts flying off a car like we saw with Brian Scott. Oil up high off of four. Those were, those were heavy-duty brake parts that are out there. You can't see them that well, but they cause a lot of damage. You heard the radio saying, green, white, checker. I'm not sure that uh, Kyle Busch didn't have a problem. Yeah, what was that sound? Yeah. We were on the onboard there. I said a lot of cars ran through that debris. I don't know if Kyle got any of it or not. Right side tires are up. Everything looks to be okay from the outside. It did sound awful when we went on board with him. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that is. It's like something flapping in there. Well, let's go back and show you exactly the first incident. Yeah, once again, off of turn two, where this track really flattens out. He had no air to the nose of his car. but just pushed out and got into the wall twice. On board, Justin Allgaier. All clear. In the fence behind you, no caution. And then here's the reason for the caution with Clint Boyer. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly where the smoke is coming from. Under the hood, obviously somewhere. We're coming out of the wheel. Maybe an oil cooler. And Jason Radcliffe's reaction. He wants that yellow because he wants his driver to have one more chance on the restart. And he will get it. Our second green-white checker here at Texas. The other one was back in April of 2006. So we'll get one more shot at this. We'll see what happens. Whether or not Kyle can get back in the front or does Carl hold on. Is your... NASCAR Nationwide Series of Texas is brought to you by Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey. Please drink responsibly. And Craftsman, the official tools of NASCAR. Well, welcome back to the O'Reilly Auto Parts Challenge in Texas. Make sure to go to NASCAR.com for all your latest NASCAR information. We're getting ready to wrap up our fifth caution. 
gives us a chance to talk about the ticket to the race. Only two more left on the schedule. We'll be at Phoenix next week. And, of course, the season ender at Homestead Miami. Just go to NASCAR.com slash tickets. Now, it looks like we may have our champion crowned today. Doc, he's uh, running third, and his crew chief, how nervous. Well, let's talk to Paul Wolf, alias Harry Hogg from Days of Thunder. You heard uh, your driver call you. All right, Paul, you told your driver you had a perfectly matched set of tires. Do they have something for the 18 and the 60 on this uh, green-white checker? Well, I think so. It's just hard, you know, the, the three cars there are just so equally matched. It's who gets the run, and the momentum gets out front. So, um, you know, we got one more shot at it here. He's not saying a whole lot. Uh, there's not much more we can do now. That was our last adjustment, so... Uh, um, you know, he's not really communicating. I think he's just thinking about what he needs to do to uh, to have a shot at it. So just real proud of the effort this weekend. Uh, all the guys worked hard on this discount tire dodge. We had uh, the issues in practice, and um, a lot of hard work went into fixing a car back. And uh, to be sitting here with a shot to win this thing uh, is pretty cool. So um, just a good day. All right. He may look calm, folks, but uh, inside he is anything but. Dave. Jason Ratcliffe, crew chief for Kyle Busch, got the caution he needed. Does Kyle have the car he needs to win this thing? Well, you know, the car, he hasn't really complained all day. We uh, started the race really strong. Our Z-Line Designs Toyota was was good. And we worked on it a little bit. Just these other guys have, have uh, you know, gotten their stuff a lot better as well. We just need the, like you said, we needed that caution to get another shot at it. The guy that gets his nose out in the clean air is going to be the guy that, that gets it done. So I'm just glad we got another opportunity. All right. We'll see who can get the nose out front, guys. And let's go back to the last restart because we still got at least one more lap. Lights are still on the pace car, and let's analyze it, guys. Well, Kyle Busch timed it perfectly. You see right here, takes it three wide underneath Trevor Bain. What a move he made. But Carl Edwards just works that outside so well in three and four, especially. He was able to clear him. Yeah, it looked like uh, Kyle Busch was going to be able to clear right here, so it would be interesting to see when Carl has the choice. Is he going to take the inside or the outside? And it looks like right now he's going to go to that inside. Let's listen to the radio. I believe if you start on the bottom there, Carl, he'll hold you down, try to take the speed away from you, you know? Yeah, but they got more power, so if he starts on the bottom, he might clear me, you know, he might clear me off the corner. So, tough to say. Yep, you're right. I'm listening to him. That's a tough call right there. Well, it'll be our 10th green-white checker this season. Brad Keselowski and Kyle Busch have combined won seven of the prior nine green-white checkers this season. Yeah, that's Mike Beam, the crew chief you see with the hat on right beside him. And it's Drew Blickensurfer, another one of the crew chiefs at Roush. He's uh, the sixth crew chief in the cup side. Kyle Busch making his 200th career nationwide start today, trying to write another page of history here at Texas. Carl Edwards. Not going to win a championship, just wants to deny Kyle and take home the trophy. And the man in third place, Brad Keselowski, all he has to do is just finish right where he is, and he will win his first championship. Yeah, but he's got something else in mind here. If that 18 does hold the 60 down here like they were talking about, then we may be three wide off the of turn two. Yeah, he was watching when Kyle Busch made it three wide on that restart. Now he's in that spot. He might try it himself. All right. Pace car has pulled off. Green white checker, the second one ever here. The other time in April of 2006, the winner was Kurt Busch. Green flag flies, and boy, what a start by Edwards. Man, Carl, that's a big gone. jump there. A huge uh -oh. jump. A lot of dust flying down there. Looked like there was some smoke, but I believe it's dust from all the speedy drive. And Kyle trying to make a run off of two. Keslowski holding station in third with Joey Logano on his high side. They're duking it out now for that position. But the battle is for the race win up front, and Edwards got a huge jump, and he is making it pay for him. Yeah, Kyle tried to go to the high side there, see if he could make a big run. That cost him a lot of time. White flag out, a mile and a half to go. Carl Edwards looking for win number three of 2010. He's not going to win the championship, but it looks like he's going to win this race. Down the back stretch, Kyle Busch not going to be able to even give him a challenge. And the man in third, the butterflies in his stomach have got to be just enormous. Carl comes and takes the checker. And here comes your champion, Brad Kieslowski. Finishes third and takes it home here at Texas with two races remaining. The 26-year-old from Rochester Hills, and look at Mom. 
she can breathe again. Well, certainly a big day for this family. Just a terrific season by Brad Kizowski and so this much. entire team. Thank you. It is the first NASCAR championship for Penske Racing, the first Dodge driver to win a nationwide series championship. And when we come back, we've got a lot of celebrating to do here at Texas. We'll talk to our champion. We'll talk to Carl, our race winner. All of it when we come back. And I'm just told we're going to stay here because of what we're about to see. We've only seen it two other times this year from Carl. I see him climb out and fans are waiting as well. There we go. Now we can go to commercial break. The fans love it. We'll be back to talk to all of them. Stay with us. We're having a blast. Hope you are too. Did you know? Consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support. And we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast. Can you tell what Brad Keselowski did his burnout from that view? Yes, sir. He has been celebrating since we stepped aside. And there he is in the smoke with the American flag and the fans standing and cheering. And a very poignant moment as uh, Carl Edwards was out on the finish line as Brad came by and let's show you that moment. Carl got the flag and and this was new. I mean, Elio Cavanaugh never started Spider-Man and now Carl says, well, let's go up in the stands and celebrate. Ah, check it out. Rose up here, join the fans. High fives all the way around. Hugs from a guy he doesn't even know. <laughs> you gotta love this. <laughs> And then, as we mentioned, uh, he came back down, and there was Brad coming back, and they congratulate each other, first and second in the points, with the new champion then just blistering those highs. What a great moment for Brad Keselowski. And there is Roger Penske. He's made his way down for the celebration. He's uh, been waiting a long time for this championship in NASCAR, and now he gets his first. Well, he's obviously put a lot into to this sport of, of NASCAR racing and finally getting a championship trophy to put on his mantle. Brad is all the way over in turn number two right now, folks. I mean, he is taking a real long victory lap. And I guess when you work this many years, why not? Yeah, why? yeah. enjoy it. It shows you With how everybody. much it means, you know, to anybody to win a championship at this level is a really incredible accomplishment. What, to me, we've talked about this early in the year, just how in getting all of this team put together. Well, let's go talk to our race winner. How about it, Vince? A lot of celebrating from Carl Edwards today. This was a, a very meaningful victory for this one and a little extra cash as well. Uh, well first time we, we've seen you do the backflip before, but uh, that's the first time we've seen you up in the stands celebrating. What was that all about? Well, I saw the gate open there, and I just want to go up there and be with the, be with the people. That's, um, man, that's fun. These fans matter and support us, and it felt good to stand up there. I'll never forget that. Um, I'm going to have to start doing that every time, but I, I got to say that uh, today we're thinking about Mike, Mick, Mike Mittler and his family and Sherry Herman and her family. They suffered some losses, and um, it's just a special day. It means a lot to win here for Copart. Copart.com. If you guys go to the website, they're revamping it and they're working on it. Be patient with them. They, they sell cars and buy cars. And uh, Fast and All, the Assessment Citation Service Centers for, for getting me here. And, um, and Aflac and Scott's and, uh, and, and Subway and Kellogg's, everybody. I've got the greatest sponsors, and, and our car ran perfectly today. Kyle indicated he thought maybe you jumped the restart there at the end. What's your uh, interpretation of how that went off? Did you see my check for 75 grand? I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> I had to do everything I could. Kyle and those guys have a, a spectacular car, and um, and he does a really good job on restarts. So I just got the best restart I could, and uh, and ended up winning us the race. And he was just, he, man, he's tough. He uh, he raced me really well on the one before that, but I knew if I gave him an inch, he'd beat us. So just proud of my guys. This is uh, this really special win. Congratulations, Carl Edwards, Doc. 
Well, Brad Keselowski has pulled his Dodge over here in front of the nationwide banner. And ladies and gentlemen, here he comes, the 2010 NASCAR Nationwide Series Champion. Let's get over here. Hey, Brad, congratulations. Your mom was standing down there with me. She said, we have waited a lifetime for this moment. What does this mean to you? It's, uh, you know, first off, it's a family accomplishment for my family. My mom and dad have got me in my break. You know, my mom, dad, uncle, my whole family uh, just made so many sacrifices along the way and uh, put up with me when I got in trouble and uh, did all those things that good parents do, and I'm lucky to have them. And, uh, you know, from there, just great people. I mean, I've got great people I'm surrounded by. This whole team that Roger Pence has given me. I'm so very fortunate uh, and blessed to have this opportunity with uh, with Paul Wolf, Roger, everybody back in the shop. The guys that are there, I missed their kids' little league game, working hard on my cars to give me his awesome discount tire, Ruby Tuesday Dodges, like we have here. Uh, almost had a win here today. Wanted to win this one too, but didn't work out. But uh, and you know, all these fans, you know, you know, your guys' support. It uh, just keeps us going through the tough times, and uh, appreciate all of you and the, the things that you guys do to support us. And even the guys that don't like you, we like you too. Here's a guy that I think you want to give a hug to over here. Coming in, first time in his career, 22 championships, but never a NASCAR title for the captain, Roger Penske, until today. How about that? One of the icons in motorsports finally gets his first NASCAR championship, and it happens here at Texas Motor Speedway. Alan? An amazing day here at Texas. And Brad Keselowski, your 2010 NASCAR Nationwide Series champion. Started the day needing to finish.